All right, hey everyone. Um, so I'll be doing a tutorial on how to um, install and I guess just use Compute Canada or as it's called now, um, Digital Research Alliance of Canada. So, okay, um, to start off, you can find lots of information about how to use this uh, service by going on their wiki page. Uh, so here it's, if you just go on Google and you type, uh, I'm used to the Compute Canada stuff. So I type Compute Canada Wiki and you get the documentation page, which I uh, was just on. So here you'll find uh, on the left side, getting started, getting help, running jobs. Uh, and these are useful pages to look at, especially when you're first starting, uh, especially things like introduction to Linux, if you're not used to the commands and the kind of things that you have to uh, type to get things to work. So to, to really uh, keep things short, uh, on Windows, you can use a tool called MOBA Xterm. This is very useful and it'll save you a lot of time dealing with some of the SSH commands that don't work sometimes or that, you, that are, you're having trouble getting to work. So I already installed it, but you can install it uh, in your own time just by following whatever instructions they tell you on this website. Uh, so in order to get your SSH connected using MOBA Xterm, you can click the session button and then click SSH. And so here it asks for the remote host name. And here it depends on which cluster you wanna to connect to. Uh, in this case, the one that I've already connected to is Cedar. But in order to get the host name uh, that you want, if you go to the, um, so I'll go back to the main page of the documentation, you go to the getting started page, you'll have what clusters are available, you can click on that. And then depending on say I click on the Beluga cluster, it'll tell you the login node here. And so this is what you want to attach at the end of the uh, email address that we'll see uh, I've put in for the Cedar cluster here. So this is beluga.compucanada.ca. But for the Cedar node, which I have configured here, if I go into the edit session, uh, you see that it's actually S Renault. So my first name is Samuel. So here's S and then Renault is my last name. And so this is the first part. And then you have at cedar.compucanada.ca. So if this was Beluga, then it would be Beluga here instead. And once that's done, that's all you needed to configure in this window and you can click OK. So this should set up your user session and if everything is done properly, now you should be able to connect. So here it asks for a keyboard a password and this is, should be the same password that you use to set up your Compute Canada account, uh, the one that you can access here on the uh, Compute Canada login page. So here I would type in S for no again, and then my password, oh, I made a mistake there. And then I would log in. So that password that you use there is the same one as you're going to be using uh, to log in uh, here. And so this website, uh, once you log in, uh, okay, so I'll just finish this. Here you'll get a pop-up for an extra password. You don't actually have to fill this one in. This is more for a local password to secure things, uh, but you don't have to set that one up if you don't want to. Uh, actually, so I'm going to return to this website for now. Uh, on here you can find a lot of useful information about um, the clusters that you've used. So you can go into my account and my resource allocations and uh, you can get some different information. But going back to the uh, MOBA Xterm window, now that we've logged into the Cedar node, we see the file and the repositories uh, on the left side. So you'll notice that there's the Nearline uh, project. You can kind of just ignore the dark files here. Uh, these aren't important. You, the important ones are Nearline, Projects, and Scratch. And if you want more information on what these files are, again, I'll refer you to uh, the documentation. You can go to the Getting Started page where you'll find the file system uh, page link and then you can get some description of uh, the different home project scratch 
uh, and uh, the Slurm tempter directories. So in terms of uh, getting things onto Compute Canada now, let's say I wanted to go into the Scratch uh, directory. So here I have to right click and click open. So we'll see that I already have quite a few files on here. Uh, but so let's say I wanted to add a new file. Well, the way I would do that is I can just create a file on my desktop, make it a text document, um, and I'll rename it to test. And then because I'm using mobile X term, this is actually very simple. Now I can just drag it and drop it. And then it'll upload to uh, here. So now it's, it's copied itself onto the scratch directory. So while you can use Mobex term, you can also use the commands um, here on the in the command line. So in order to get the commands that you would type in order to put files on uh, Compute Canada, you can again go to the documentation, go into getting started, uh, go into the introduction to Linux. Uh, actually, so here introduction to Linux might not have what we're looking for. Um, there's creating, deleting files, copying files. But if you want transfer files, then you'll go to the transfer files page. And so here it'll talk about the SCP protocols and the different ways that you can actually transfer things from your desktop to uh, the computer. I found that it's uh, it can be tricky sometimes to get the right directories and the right uh, command line uh, prompts in order to get the files to transfer properly. But um, yeah, that's the other way to do it. So now that you have your file on Compute Canada, uh, you probably want to, if it's a script, you want to run it. And then if it's data, then you want to like store it on here and then maybe run uh, something else. Uh, so, okay, in terms of getting your first script to run, we can go back to uh, the wiki again. But in this case, I'm just going to open up one of the pages that I already had open unless I closed it. Okay, so you have this running jobs page. So on the running job page, it tells you how you can sub uh, which scripts or which commands to type to submit scripts. So here you have as batch, uh, which is the script that you would use to submit a batch job. And we'll look at that in a second. Um, and then there's also interactive jobs, which have a different command. They have the s alloc uh, command. So first, let's take a look at submitting a script or a batch job. So here I have an example of a script. So here what you see is um, the text in green that's preceded by one of these hashtags is um, the commands that are that are relevant to the like hardware specification of the script. So here I have like the account that I'm going to use, the number of nodes, the number of GPUs, tasks per node, the amount of RAM that I want for the job and the amount of time the job will take. So this is all information that you actually need to have before you can submit a job. Uh, some of the information like a GPU, if it's not an input, it will assume that you don't want a GPU and it will not give you a GPU. Uh, and so th the information on uh, submitting jobs can be found on the wiki. But in this case, this is what we're asking for. And in the terms of the account, uh, here we specify which account we want to run on. And this you can find the information on uh, your account page here. You can see that um, here we have the def Armansbach group name, and then the CTB group name. Uh, but this CTB group name, I think, was reserved for uh, a different kind of allocation, and that can only be used on a different cluster. So we have to use the def one instead, which is default. <clears throat> now, if I wanted to submit this script that we were just looking at, it's called script AAE pep prop. And so all I need to do is according to running jobs here, if I go back to the top, it says as batch, and then whatever the name of your job is dot sh. So if I just type it out, we have script, AAE, pep, prop, 
dot sh. Oh, I forgot, but it's going to be s batch. Uh, and now we'll see that actually, so there's an error. Uh, and so this error is because when you first start the Compute Canada um, on mobile Xterm, even if you're on Cedar, it'll start you on home. So you have to change and go into the scratch directory. And I'll just hit up twice on the keyboard. I'll bring back that previous command that I typed. And then I'll submit this batch job. <clears throat> so here it gives me a warning about the memory size that I requested, which was submitted as 8G, which is gigabytes, but they will only be giving it to me in these intervals of, uh, or uh, multiples of two, or so I, but it's not important. Once you submitted the job, you can check, um, and it's important to check that it's been submitted properly and by typing SQ. So here you have the ID of the job, you'll have the user, the account that you're using, and importantly, you have the state, this ST. Now it says PD for pending. Um, and when it's running, it'll actually change to R and it'll say running on the right hand side here. But you can just get a good uh, a glimpse of the things that you're requesting here. Now, if you want to cancel the script, you type as cancel. This information is also on the wiki. You have to copy your um, job ID. Actually, I forgot that. In order to copy things, it depends how you've set up your keyboard, but uh, so I'm just going to paste that number. So you have to paste the or copy the job ID or type it out and then it'll cancel the job. So now if I type SQ again, so sometimes SQ can take a little bit of time to retrieve the information. <clears throat> Anyways, we should see that uh, it was canceled, and so it should come in soon. If your job does run, uh, you'll get a, a command line output from the job that looks something like this. Here it says slurm, and then it says it should say the uh, number of the job. Uh, so this job ID here, that's what will be written when it actually runs. So here, as you can see, it returned nothing for the uh, uh, jobs because it, now it's empty now that we've canceled the job. So that's it in terms of running a batch job. Uh, and that's it in terms of doing things on mobile X term. Uh, I may make another part with uh, looking at SSH and those kind of commands without using mobile X term. Uh, but that's it for this tutorial.